Welcome to a Council of Black Belts. I'm Shihan Scotty Folks. I hold the current ranking of 8th Don, and I am Nidai Soki, second generation head of family of Idaru Jiu Jitsu. And I will be the moderator of this episode, Courage. What is a Council of Black Belts? It is simply what the name implies a group of black belts from various martial arts styles coming together to openly discuss various topics in and around the martial arts. In addition, it is an open and honest discussion, not only in martial arts studies and or instruction, but how to incorporate the martial arts into one's daily life. Our topic of discussion today is courage. The following on courage comes from the World Martial Arts Congress, the Guardian Manual, Lessons in Martial Arts Leadership the character traits, the roots of the martial arts. Lesson, courage. Definition, mental or moral strength to venture, preserve, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. The ability to do something that frightens one, strength in the face of pain or grief. In daily life, most of us are recognized that there is a physical and moral respect aspects to courage but there is also a spiritual aspect. Religion and spirituality are not the same thing, although they may be blended for some people. Spiritual courage may be described as not allowing yourself to be forced to do anything that compromises your personal spiritual well-being, growth, or development. A biblical definition of courage states, courage is the quality of being able to act bravely under difficulties or in the face of opposition, being prepared to do dangerous or risky things in obedience to God and the belief that he will strengthen, guard and protect his people. Courage in the Japanese culture. Courage lies at the very heart of Japanese culture. Japanese kanji expresses courage, yuki, dokio, which loosely translates to the ability to surpass anxiety without fear, even in the event of danger, difficulty, or misery. Dragonflies is a symbol of the Japanese samurai. The Japanese samurai honored the dragonfly in many ways. In the 17th century, high-ranking Japanese lords used dragonflies to shape helmets so they could be easily identified on the battlefield. The dragonfly image was often embolized on the hilts of swords, breastplates, and arrow quivers because dragonflies were thought to be fearless, swift, and courageous. They were believed to bring soldiers strength and protection. The dragonfly was known as the victory insect because it would quickly advance towards its target and efficiently kill a pest without hesitation or retreat. In a Japanese legend, an emperor had a horsefly bite him on the arm while out hunting. Before the horsefly could bite him again, a dragonfly swooped down and ate the offending insect. The emperor was so impressed by the dragonfly that he named the region he was in Akutsu no, or Dragonfly Plain. The panel is now open for discussion. What are your thoughts and or experiences with courage? Please feel free to share your thoughts 
as well as additional topics you would like to see discussed. If you're interested in being a part of the Council of Black Belts, please let me know. We have added an additional topic to our discussions called What Would Soki Say? This segment will allow us to hear the thoughts from those no longer with us on this side of the dojo. If you have a sensei who is no longer with you on this earthly journey, please share his or her thoughts on a topic, and we will include such thoughts when the topic is discussed. I look forward to hearing from you. Reach out to me via email, idaru1982 at gmail.com. That's A-I-D-O-R-Y-U-1982 at gmail.com. Thank you. Our first thoughts come from Grandmaster Richard Hackworth. Grandmaster Hackworth shares, as a martial arts teacher, I've been asked, what is courage? And does everybody have it? Where do you find it? You can't buy it at the store. You don't need to be superheroes to show courage. Superheroes are powerful, bold, and brave, but you don't need to think and act like a superhero to have courage. I tell my students that real heroes like policemen, doctors, firemen, and soldiers show courage by protecting and helping others. I believe that courage is inside all of us. You just must find it and use it. In fact, we practice big and small acts of courage every day. There are lots of things that we tell ourselves that we believe. Sometimes that voice tells us that we're afraid, so we can tell that voice, thank you for trying to keep us safe, but I choose to be brave and face my fears. You can say to yourself, my fears won't stop me. You can say, I must do something. You can say, I can do it with the courageous voice inside. We all have a courageous voice inside, each of us, but you have to choose your courageous voice and listen to it. Courage is the bold lion's voice that helps you to be strong. It is also the calm mouse's voice that whispers to you everything will be okay. The courageous voice remains, reminds us to be honest and brave. Having courage means that no matter what comes our way, we do our best, we do the right thing, Having courage means that you get back up and try again. Courage tells you to do the right thing even when it's hard. Courage tells you to stand up for yourself and others. Courage tells us to use love instead of hate or anger. With courage, you can act and be yourself. Courage helps you feel like you're a superhero. Choose your courageous voice and listen to it. Let's find the courageous voice inside of us and let it shine. Thank you for your thoughts, Grandmaster Ackworth. Next, Sifu Keith Fanning shares his thoughts on courage. When it comes to courage, there are so many different views and opinions on what courage actually is. A lot of people go to the fighter or warrior when they think of courage. I personally went to an image of a friend who was battling cancer. He had the courage to face every day and not grumble or look for pity. He went and got his treatments, knowing that he would be sick for a few days. And he did this with courage. I also remember looking at the three steps into the ring on my first fight and my master telling me take, that it takes real courage to take those three steps. So I have a varied opinions on courage when I first got asked to do this piece. I want to focus on the fighter side though, as I have more experience there not only as a fighter and competitor, but also as a coach and a mentor. The lion inside is filled with courage and the child inside is filled with nervous excitement. It's combining the two in making your stance on the fight and putting your faith in the training of your coach that you have done enough to win. It also takes courage to face your opponent in defeat and pay your respects. Thank you for your thoughts, Sifu. Next, we hear from Dr. R.W. Stone and his thoughts on courage.
Dr. Stone shares, in the original Magnificent Six Seven movie, one of the seven gunmen hired to fight a large band of outlaws and protect a small farming town explains to the local Mexican children who are all view him as a hero that it is in fact their fathers who have real courage. He's fighting against outlaws who outnumber him 10 to one, yet admires the farmers for having the fortitude to withstand nature, long hours of backbreaking work, starvation and deprivation to provide for their families. That's his real courage, he explains. I have never had this kind of courage. Physical courage is certainly admirable, but if you examine it closely, you will see that in such instances, the hero usually had some level of training to condition their mind and bodies to face the threat. Police, firefighters, military veterans are the ones most recognized as being courageous and rightfully so. But again, such individuals all had some level of training to prepare themselves for such a possibility. Most of us are terrified of the thought of being in a burning building, but once a fireman learns how fires react, and how they can protect themselves from fighting a fire becomes less of a fearful act. In like manner, the martial arts provides repetitive training against physical and moral threats that helps condition students to prepare for the time when such a situation might arise. Having someone throw a punch at you might be intimidating to the average untrained person, yet after practicing defenses against punches for some time, the thought of being attacked becomes less frightening. The more you understand something and the more accustomed you become to dealing with it, the less frightening it seems. Ask the average person about courage and they will mention such physical acts as facing an armed gunman to rescue someone or will use the example of someone who sacrifices himself to save another such as a soldier who throws himself on a grenade to save their comrades. Again, this examples, these examples would absolutely be correct, but it isn't all there, is the notion of courage. When my daughter was younger, she asked me about my profession and asked what it took to be a veterinarian. She was surprised when I answered that it took courage. She was puzzled until I explained that at one time or another, everyone has heard the expression the courage of one's convictions. Acting in a moral manner or refusing to compromise ethical principles when no one is watching can take a great deal of intestinal fortitude. Sticking to your principles in the face of public criticism, personal attacks, or the threat of economic damage is something that can weigh on both mind and body. It takes a lot of courage sometimes to stick to your guns. Rich businessmen aren't the only ones who get ulcers, acid indigestion, or loss, hair loss from worry. My instructor once pointed out to me that not everyone is born with a dominant personality or the instinct to attack. Many of us tend to shy away from threats and violence and other others often cower instinctively in response to physical and verbal abuse thoughts. Just as the military trains and prepares their troops by exposing them to simulated threats, the martial arts trains its pupils to gain courage by exposing them to repetitive physical drills and by explaining the details of attacks and defenses. Again, when you understand and are familiar with something, it becomes far less frightening. Perhaps more importantly, however, are the tenets of the martial arts, the development of an indomitable spirit and the concepts of integrity and perseverance are equally as important in developing personal courage. The inspiration of my instructor, who has shown up to teach class for years despite physical and personal issues, has been indescribably important to me. I have learned not just to face physical threats, but to have the courage to persevere in my daily life as well. Doubt, worry, and fear of life's imponderables seems less important to me than it did years ago. Courage can certainly be an incentive act of self-sacrifice performed solely for the benefit of others, but perhaps it can also be the act of maintaining steadfastness in the face of hardship. Calvin Coolidge once said, press on, nothing can take the place of perseverance. 
Perhaps, therefore, perseverance is one of the tenets of the martial arts. By way of example, when I was in my first year of college, I thought the workload was unbelievably hard and was asking myself if I could bear up under the burden of all those courses, theses, papers, and examinations. At the time, I had joined a Taekwondo class and for my first belt examination was required to break a pine board with my bare hand. It seemed unlikely I could do that and I was sure I would end up with a broken hand. Yet my instructor at the time explained how to do it and said he had confidence in me. To my surprise, the board broke and my hand was fine. I returned to my dorm room that night with a new outlook on things. If I would break a solid wood board with my hand, I reasoned, then why would I ever be afraid of a simple written exam? The martial arts taught me to comfort my fears and conquer them, which may be the definition of courage we all look for. Thank you for your words, Dr. Stone. Next, Rinchi Jeff Winters, Fourth Dawn in Ida Rue. Rinchi Winters' thoughts on courage. Part of being courageous is knowing your limitations. Never confuse courage with aggression. Sometimes being courageous is doing nothing. Peace and courage go hand in hand. Thank you for your thoughts, Rinchi Winters. Thank you for your time today. Be blessed and we look forward to speaking with you on our next episode. Have a blessed day.